Well, what have we here? A whole smorgasbord of new VTXs from AKK Tech. If you're unfamiliar with that name, they are a manufacturer, and that's really important, of the whole range of FPV gear from little micro all-in-one cameras through antennas, drones, and of course VTXs. They actually manufacture for other brands, so you may have even used an AKK product without even realizing it. This new range has just been launched then, just this month in February. It is the Alpha 4, 5, 8 and 10, indicating their maximum wattage. And uh, up to 10 watts is uh, quite incredible. They're all the same form factor. And what I'm going to do now is to go through and show you the features of these VTXs and try one out. The module then, as you can probably tell, has a metal casing and on the back there, the heatsink even has a built-in fan, which is a really nice touch. Another thing that I really like is that it has the SMA female connector there. Now, back in 2019, I reviewed this AKK FX Dominator and a couple of things that I didn't like one was that it runs pretty warm, and even the, with the two heat sinks, uh, you need to make sure that you have good airflow over that. And one thing I really didn't like was this MMCX type connector. It's been noted that uh, there is a high degree of variability in these little pigtails, and as you're going up in power, that's going to be more and more important. So they've moved away from that, which is good news as far as I'm concerned. It has the four mounting holes here, which are on a 30.5 millimeter pitch. The length of the guy is 68 millimeters by 36 wide by 15 tall. The weight coming in at some 48 grams, and that's the same across the whole range, whether it's the 4 watt module or the 10 watt module the form factor is identical. No surprises on the connector here, 5 volts out and that's limited to 500 milliamps. Ground video out TBS which is smart audio and the power input ground and the power from 12 to 28 volts. They actually recommend running it on 6S and the microphone that you can see there. Just a single switch on the side there for configuring it if you're not configuring it via the smart audio and the traditional type of indicator LED there. Also included then is an SMA pigtail. That's just a, an extension or obviously you can connect your antenna directly to the top of the unit there and the traditional type cable plugs in like so. The power leads are doubled up and it's stressed that you should keep those doubled up and clearly both soldered to the positive and negative supply. No surprises then in the manual there, just the description of the parts that I've just gone over and a warning not to power the device up without an antenna connected, that's uh, common sense, especially running at these relatively high powers. And do not remove the heatsink, I don't think I'm going to. Some mounting tips there, obviously keeping it in the airflow and a mention of the fact that it has the pit mode available. It goes through the channel selection, which we will see a bit later, and the standard 80 channels. As I mentioned, 12 to 28 volts, 6S recommended. The output of 5 volts, 80 channels. This being the Alpha 4, we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 watts selectable. The others being 1, 2, 3 and 5, 1, 3, 5 and 8, and finally 1, 3, 5, 7 and 10. So 5 selectable outputs there on the Alpha 10. Looking at the power consumption for the Alpha 4, at 28 volts, 700 milliamps, 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And you can see there the 
respective values for the other modules. Features, smart audio, cooling fan and heatsink, all good news, the mounting holes, an SMA connector, and a JST 8-pin for the rest of the connections. Let's go ahead now then and power it up and do some tests. All cabled up now then. I'm using my bench power supply to supply it at 22 volts, which is more or less 6S. I've hooked up a little camera. AKK have also kindly provided me with a couple of 5.8 right hand circularly polarized antennas. Well, that's what we have there. Let's see where we go. I don't know if you noticed, but it took a little while to ramp up and stabilize at around about 290 milliamps. And on the display here, we've got R1 and a flashing one. So that's race band, channel one, and one watt. To set the thing up then when not using the smart audio, we can simply press and hold the button briefly and that will change the channel. So for example, if we want to be on channel six, then we just leave it. And now it's flashing, still in the race band, but channel six and still at one watt. Now, if we hold the button in for a little bit longer until we get the R flashing, we can change the band. So for example, we can leave it on E. So band, channel, and still at the one watt. Finally then, if we hold the button in for longer, This should now be the output power. So if we say switch it up to two watts, there's the confirmation. Then the band E, channel six, and two watts. All is good. What I've done now then is to hook up my little power meter. Now this on its own can only measure up to a watt. So I've had to put in a little attenuator, 3 dBs there, and you reconfigure the power meter to account for that and connect it obviously directly. Well, I needed another converter to get the uh, connections correct into the antenna there. The meter, it's recommended you don't run it for more than about 30 seconds at this sort of power, otherwise it will affect the reading. We've seen that this is now set um, to the channel 6 on the band E, which is around about 5.9 gigahertz. The power meter needs that value to give an accurate reading. Enough waffling then, let's turn the little meter on. We can see there, obviously, minus 23 dBm at the moment, and in the corner there, 5900 megahertz. Powering on then, and again, wait for it to ramp up. And now that it's at around about 573 milliamps, we can see on the meter here, two watts or 2.01 watts. Again, we're not going to leave that running for too long, but that value works for me. In summary then, a very exciting new range from AKK Tech. I'm currently waiting for a new 10 dB attenuator so that I can test the higher powers. And the weather's rotten right now and not suitable for flying. So hopefully by the time I have that, I'll make a new video giving some examples of it in use. Thanks for watching.